I'm content creator, Corey Walmsley. I empower women entrepreneurs by sharing book writing and publishing solutions on my show, Page Turner's Studio with Corey. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Page Turner Studio with Corey. I'm your host, Corey Wamsley, CEO of Aurora Corealis Publishing. And today we have another amazing guest. We're going to be talking to Dr. Justine Weber. The title of our show today is How to Heal with Your Story with Psychologist Dr. Justine Weber. I'm very excited to have her on. Um, she is one of our authors, and she just published an absolutely amazing book to help people with uh, narcissistic abuse. So, Lots of good stuff today. Um, before we get started with that, I did want to mention that my newest book, The Treasures We Seek, is out. Make sure you grab a copy at the link below. This is a book about a woman who was going through a really difficult time in her life, and she ended up on an archaeological dig in Italy, and somehow that solves all her problems. Um, not really, but definitely get a copy of that. Um, and also, if you are a person who likes to jot down their thoughts or a writer, like many of us are, make sure you grab one of our new um, journals. These are uh, very small. They fit in your pocket. They fit in your purse. Um, you can throw them in your car and you can pick those up at the links below. Make sure you grab those. They're 200 pages and they are fantastic for keeping all your notes. So um, without going into too much other stuff here, let me introduce our guest, Justine is a California licensed psychologist, as well as a coach who helps people heal from narcissistic abuse and rebuild their life. Justine also helps people navigate high conflict divorces. So she's a pretty powerful person to uh, be able to connect with. I'm very excited about this. Um, so let me bring her up from the green room. Welcome, Justine. Hello, Corey. I'm so happy to be here. Thank yeah, you. For thank you for joining me. Very excited. Yeah. So I wanted to kick things off by talking about your book. Um, can you show everybody the uh, the lovely cover here? Yes. <laughs> Fantastic title. How the f do I heal from this? Um, <laughs> tell me how you came up with this title. Yes. So I um, well. In my personal life, um, you know, fuck is a fun word to say. <laughs> um, and I also noticed that women who um, I, you know, my target audience is really a woman who has just left, but not just a woman. I do work with um, men as well. Mm -hmm. um, but a woman who has just left, um, you know, a lot of them have been in, you know, a marriage or a relationship for, you know, five, 10, 15. I have a woman that, was married for 25, 28 years. Wow. And, you know, they're at this place where, you know, I always ask the question during the intake, you know, when did you realize this was narcissism? And the answers are range from um, four days ago to, you know, three months ago to six months ago to I've always known. Wow. And so, but I noticed this theme where these women are just at this place of like, despair and just frustration. They're like angry, you know, and they're like, wait a minute, you're telling me that I've invested 20 years of my everything into this marriage was loyal, compassionate, you know, gave my everything, heart, soul and everything. And you're telling me that he's never going to change. And that basically the relationship didn't exist because he was, um, <laughs> portraying this person that he really is not. Yeah. And you're telling me that I need to change. What the fuck? Yes. You know, and so they're just at this place of like anger, they're frustrated, they're at a loss, they're just, you know, but then they're like, okay, so tell me what to do. So how do I do it? Yeah. Yeah, I think that the cover conveys that perfectly. Um, and I know we had talked about this before. When I look at this cover, it reminds me of like a crack in the sidewalk and how you always see like little flowers or little blades of grass or something coming up through. And it's like, even though there's this really hard concrete truth you're dealing with, there's still hope. There's still little pieces of life coming up through and you really can move on from this. And I think that, you know, the cover itself is hopeful. That's what I was hoping for, um, mm -hmm. is that, you know, it's very much this contrast of like past and present, you know, old self, like new self, yeah. um, you know, trauma, healing, you know, pain, 
uh, you know, pain and, um, you know, joy, you know, even with a white, um, with color too. Yeah. And so, um, that's what I was hoping, you know, that when somebody looks at this book, they, it resonates. I, I do agree with you. I think the title kind of says everything, but then yeah. it's just hopeful. Like, oh, could I, is it possible? Like I could actually yeah. enjoy, I could actually, you know, find meaning and purpose and feel whole again after what yeah. I've gone through, after everything yeah. I've been through. I love that. I think that's fantastic. Um, I wanted to talk about Justine's impactful page turner share. A life full of joy and happiness is possible no matter how severely you've been abused. With the right treatment, your healing and recovery can lead you to a joyful and meaningful life. And I think that was a really great segue into this. Tell me a little bit more about, um, about this, about uh, what you've experienced with your clients and kind of how you incorporated that into the book. Yeah. I mean, I've just, um, you know, I've noticed that in life, oftentimes when we reach a just emotional rock bottom, you know, mm -hmm. nobody wants to put themselves in situations where you're just in a lot of pain and suffering. Things just happen to us, yeah. things that are out of our control. And, you know, um, and so I noticed that when people do reach this emotional rock bottom where you're just kind of at the floor and everything seems hopeless and there's so much pain and suffering and you've lost your intuition, you've lost your reality, you've lost your ability to make decisions, you don't trust yourself anymore, you don't trust other people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I noticed that, you know, with the right treatment when you're in this place, you know, um, life can be so beautiful on the other side. It takes a lot of courage to get to the place where you're like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to heal from this. This is going to make me a better person. Um, I have no other option. You know, it's like you either have to start climbing out of it or you stay stuck, you know, forever and keep repeating these patterns. Yeah. And so, um, healing is an investment. You know, I always say it's, it can be expensive. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It can be expensive, but it's so worth it. You know, um, hire a coach, a psychologist, you know, join a, a, a group, um, reach out to friends, get that support from people where you feel that love um, and validate your experience, you know, because when you've been gaslit for years and that sense of reality and questioning and self-doubt, you know, you're just drowning in it. So how do you begin to foster and regrow that? Well, it's a gradual, slow process. But I notice these women that that I work with who, you know, they have so much courage and um, this dedication of like, I'm going to heal from this, you know, their life is just so much better after. I mean, they've, you know, oftentimes it takes like career changes these women after they've um healed and through their growth they're like you know what i want to be this and so they kind of start over with a completely new career or they move or they weed out friends that no longer work for them anymore and they connect with new friendships and so life just ends up being overall so much richer and mm -hmm. fuller and there's more purpose and meaning you know they've clarified their values in life you know, um, they're so much stronger, you yeah. know, and I think what's really fun for my clients is when they're able to pick up on things like the red flags yeah. sooner, like, you know, it's almost like they can walk into a party and watch people's interactions yeah. and pick up on things of like toxic, you know, yeah. like behavior or like gaslighting or just aspects of people's personalities yeah, they see through it where nobody else does because yeah. of all of this work. I think that's what can be very empowering. It's very um, almost exciting where you know you're seeing things that nobody else does, and it's so obvious to you. <laughs> and everyone else is like, "But he's amazing, this person." And you're like, "No, he's actually quite toxic." <laughs> <That's what I'm laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it almost becomes a superpower if you can flip it in that direction. Yes. Um, and I think it's important too, um, just moving to your uh, being a page turner tip uh, to be able to 
take what you've learned and share it to be able to take that and help others. Um, and earlier, uh, Dr. Justine said people connecting and sharing stories is helpful during healing and recovery. And I think that that is something that goes both ways. You know, when you're sharing, you're also healing too. Absolutely. It is yeah. so important. I mean, when, when you're in it, I wish this information existed when I was going through my um, stuff because I was all alone and being alone and feeling like you are the only one who feels like this and you're the only one who experiences this kind of pain, it makes it worse. And yeah. so just knowing that this common humanity of, oh, this is a thing like gaslighting is actually a word, you know, yeah. um, you know, shift blaming is an actual thing, you know, emotional abuse looks like this. So it really validates your experience. And this is what can help foster growth and more um, fostering, you know, stronger um, connection to your intuition mm -hmm. and, you know, all of that. So yes, it is so important. It's, it's very, I think natural for probably most people when you're going through such a painful period, mm -hmm. you're trying to understand what this is. You just want to isolate. Most people don't understand. You worry about them judging you. You don't want to come across as like a weak person or right. like you know, your whole life is just unraveling. So it's this idea. I'll just stay by myself. And this actually impairs growth and healing. We yeah. have to connect with other people. So I always encourage, you know, join a ladies group. You know, there's all kinds of online free groups of ladies who are going through right. experiences, um, particularly with, you know, like narcissism. There's so much information out there. The more information you have, watch YouTube videos, watch on social media. Um, um, there's so much information uh, when you know what something is, it's easier to detach from it and to strengthen yourself to begin to, you know, to make different choices, um, but connect with friendships, yeah. but also, you know, choose friends that are going to validate you and act as a healthy sounding board and not create more judgment or gaslight you more. Right. Make sure you're picky with your friends. The moment you feel bad about yourself or feel worse about yourself when you get off the phone with a friend, maybe stop talking to them for a while till you're further down the road. If you're noticing a pattern, every single time I talk to this friend, I feel like I'm really screwed up yeah. and I'm always getting everything wrong and that something's wrong with me. That's an indication like, no, this yeah. person is not going to be helpful. I'm accepted. I feel better. You know, those are good signs. <laughs> Good. Yeah, those are good tips. Thank you. Um, and I wanted to share the uh, turn the page with Corey tip going deeper with your story curates more connection with your audience, but it doesn't have to be painful. And I think that's something important that, you know, you showcase with this book is that, you know, you're sharing the stories of different people that you've worked with, but you're not going so deep in that people are going to be triggered by them. Right. Yeah. Right. It's just to validate like, oh, I know what that's like, or that, yeah. you know, or that happened to me. Just yeah. that common humanity. Um, this is how we're able to be more compassionate, you know, to ourself. Right. Yeah, I agree with that. And I, I think it's important to be able to step back from the story and say, okay, this is where we need to stop. Um, and the make an impact tip with Corey, when you're writing from a place of love, it comes through in your words. And definitely this is something that I noticed with this book. Is that kind of how you felt when you were writing too? Yes. hundred percent. Yeah. It was hundred percent just love. You know, my goal was just like connecting, being compassionate, um, reaching out to people who would resonate with this information. Mm -hmm. Um, I also, I've been told that, or I've had feedback um, from quite a few people that my book is very um, frank and mm -hmm. I don't like, you know, what's the word? I don't know. Just like, I'm just very, I you know, I kind of tell it how it is. Like, yeah. this is going to suck, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, particularly with post-separation abuse. I think I, um, in that chapter, I started off with like, brace yourself. <laughs> this is yeah. going to suck. Um, and so I appreciated that too, because that's really my personality. You know, I just try to be really frank and, um, 
a lot of this stuff that you're talking about is really not pretty. <laughs> it's far from pretty. Yeah. And I think it's important that you are so honest with them and let them know what's going on up front. So wonderful job on that book. And thank you so much for being on today. This was incredible. I loved being able to talk about the book and I love the tips that you gave to help people out too. So thank you. Great. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Well, we're going to send Justine back to the green room and we'll, we will wrap up. Bye. I'll see you next Bye. time. Thank you. Well, that was another episode of Page Turner Studio with Corey. Please join me again next week for another episode. We're on at 7 Pacific, 9 Central, or if you're in Pittsburgh or the East Coast like me, we're on at 10 Eastern, um, and I'll be featuring another guest. We're on YouTube, so make sure you like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Until next time. You can learn more about my services and products at auroracorealispublishing.com. Make sure to join me every week on the SWE Media Network YouTube channel and wherever you listen to podcasts.